Flow of the Fight, beating a counterpuncher with Keith Thurman versus Mario Barrios. Now, Keith Thurman is not a great fainting and probing fighter. He doesn't like to control the space very well. He likes to control his opponents with his power punches instead. Fear of like big, big attacks. So when Keith Thurman is trying to fight someone like Mario Barrios, who's actually pretty good at countering and fighting off of his opponent's jab, he was having a little bit of success, or rather Mario Barrios was having a little bit of success early in the fight, picking Keith Thurman off and stopping him from getting into kind of a, a rhythm to land his big bombs. As we see coming here, penduluming forward, trying to get that cross off to set something up, and getting picked off by Mario Barrios here. Again, Keith Thurman realized eventually that he was going to have to start punching in combination so he can get enough control of Mario Barrios to get him afraid of the next punch uh, and hopefully to break rhythm. Now, as we see here, he was shooting ones and ones, and Mario Barrios was picking him off. So Mario Barrios is going to try to slip to the front foot and countering him with the body shot here, and Keith Thurman actually catches him with the right hand even though he still gets hit with the body shot, okay? Again, Keith Thurman, not very good at fainting and probing, right? But looking to take advantage of the fact that that Mario Barrios was countering the jab before, so now he's layering that attack with the right hand, and it's going to augment the way that Mario Barrios is going to interact with him with his counters, because now he's going to be worried about a right hand as well. And as the fight progresses we can see that that opens up a little bit of space. Now there's no counters coming off of the jab here, and Mario Barrios may be expecting the right hand, and that gives Keith Thurman a little bit of space to kind of start getting into a groove to landing this lead left penduluming cross or uppercut hook-ish thing that uh, Keith Thurman throws. Now, if you pay attention to the beginning of the fight, the very first combination Keith Thurman threw, he tried to land this punch against Mario Barrios, and he got clipped in the air. Um, it was a very impressive shot from Mario Barrios, but it's one of the only ways that Keith Thurman can go forward. Again, if you guys watch the We Fight How We Train video, this is ingrained in the way that Keith Thurman fights and how he comes forward penduluming and getting his head in this position. So it's absolutely imperative that Keith Thurman finds a way to open this attack up, otherwise he will not have success against his opponent. But realizing that he can get a little bit of control, again, controlling him with the jab here, and control, fainting this one, and going to the body. Again, in the last sequence, showing him the right hand that he can open up space for it, augmenting Barrios' ability to interact with him, and then giving Keith Thurman enough time to start seeing where the holes are for this punch here. Now as we go forward... Again, Keith Thurman trying to get that punch going. Jab, jab, controlling the space, getting control of Barrios. Again, not a fainter, not a prober, but controlling his opponents with real punches, real time, and then getting that cross off, and again, kind of getting picked off, right? Kind of, but getting into the motion, getting his, his uh, groove going, uh, until around the fourth round, getting control of him with big right hands, big leaping left hooks, right? getting this one off, and then using those moves to move into bigger punches. Again, just using these ones to control enough space to get into position to pendulum, as we can see here, front foot, and now he throws the left hand, and now his hips are going to shift in the air, and he's going to be pendulum stepping this way so that he can get into position to land this follow-up shot. Again, throwing punch after punch after punch at Mario Barrios, flooding the line and preventing him from being as effective with his punches or with his counter punches because he doesn't actually know when Keith Thurman is going to take a break or when he's going to continue his sequence. All the way up until Keith Thurman is able to make an adjustment and start controlling, penduluming with that shot, stepping forward, very, very, very athletic, very difficult to do. Look at how he feints the right hand here, gets control of Mario Barrios, but breaks rhythm to throw that leaping left cross or rather that left uppercut that he usually leaps off of. Boom and then another right hand after. Again, making a couple of adjustments and finding a way to get control of his opponent with those probing type shots, even though he usually has to throw them first to gain information. Again, Keith Thurman usually gains information through honest punching at his opponents, but he's capable of making adjustments and taking, those, um, taking that information and uh, creating a game plan, or rather a layer of craft around his, his attacks, right? Or, layering his sequences, um, but doing a great job of finding the opening and, uh, and landing some really clean shots on Mario Barrios. Now, again, 
Mario Barrios, not really great at controlling the space with feinting and probing himself. Not very good at controlling the space with lead hand control or rear hand control. Which means that anytime Keith Thurman does wind up trying to feint him, he has to respect it. Okay? Because he doesn't have control of the line, because he didn't have his hand there, because he knows that if he didn't move, this could have been a landed punch for Keith Thurman. Or he gets here. Again, he doesn't have his right hand in the glove, um, uh, trying to parry this glove, uh, this lead hand, all right, from uh, Keith Thurman. And then not using the right hand or the left hand to shift his weight to the back foot and get control of the lead hand. So again, when that probe comes out, he has to respect it. Because he doesn't know whether it's going to be a feint. He doesn't know whether it's going to be a probe. And he doesn't have control of the line, making it so that Keith Thurman has to go around that part of the line to make an attack. Meaning it's very likely going to be a power punch or force him to cross the line, which makes those moves more predictable. But again, because he doesn't have control of the line, and neither does Keith Thurman, unless he starts probing, unless he starts committing to the line here, committing to the line here, um... He has no way to anticipate what it is that Keith Thurman's going to do other than by memory. And Keith Thurman has spent a good deal of this, uh, the fight layering his attacks and trying to throw counter punches, or rather uh, punches that will be good and effective against Mario Barrios' style of counter punching. So breaking his rhythm a little bit, um, but doing a pretty decent job uh, for a C-level fighter, right? Now, I think Keith Thurman is a C-plus level fighter. Um, he can do most of the moves, He's but he's also very fast and hits pretty hard, okay? Pretty hard. Um, I would say, in the grand scheme of things, if Keith Thurman was... Keith Thurman's probably got available to him probably like 70% of his like available power to him. And most fighters don't even get 50. Like Mario Barrios is probably at like 40% of his... His potential power, um, maybe maybe even 30%. He could definitely, with proper body mechanics, he should be hitting way, 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 way harder than he is. Um, and someone like Keith Thurman, who's developed his punching technique pretty well, I would say he's probably at about 70%. So pretty decent puncher, right? We saw that once he got up on Mario Barrios and he landed three or four punches, uh, he could stun him. Right, And again, it's very difficult to take multiple punches, um, but again, it's one of the reasons why Keith Thurman hasn't had a real knockout in a long time. When you fight at the, le the highest level, uh, you're going to be fighting people who have been hit. They've been hit hard. They've been hit the hardest. Okay, and they've had to recover. Um, these people have a lot of experience. They're in good shape. They recover pretty well, and it's not always easy to hit these kinds of people multiple times in a row, uh, let alone if you have to hit them multiple times in a row with combinations like Keith Thurman. So, anyway, uh, it was a pretty good performance from Keith Thurman. Um, he still looked a little fragile to me, and and it was tough to tell if he was getting hurt to the body, um, if, if he was getting hurt to the body, or he was just taking a lot of breaks, because this sequence here, as he gets to the front foot here, he controls the space. Pendulum's on his opponent. Now he's on the back foot. Now he has to slide forward and control the space with his rear hand, which is another pendulum step, double pendulum stepping. Now he has to get to this position and break rhythm to throw this shot, and then throw that shot, and then throw a left hook, and then control his opponent. This is just an, an absolute incredible sequence. Very, very difficult to do in front of a high-level opponent. And that's one of the problems with Keith Thurman's offense, is that it oftentimes requires a lot of athleticism, a lot of energy. Um, and that's why it was pretty hard to gauge um, how much, how likely Keith Thurman was to stop someone like Mario Barrios, because we can't really get a sense for his limit, right? Where he's getting stressed. Um, and Keith Thurman, I think he did stay pretty poised. Um, he did win the majority of the rounds in convincing fashion. Um, but, um, yeah, it's interesting because I don't know how, I don't know how well that style is going to do against Errol Spence, okay? Uh, now we're going to be breaking that down on Patreon. It's very likely going to be the next fight. Uh, obviously, we're going to probably wait until Ugas finishes because I actually think Ugas has a good shot at upsetting him. Um, but yeah, if Keith Thurman has to keep retreating and he can't get respect from his opponents with his power punching, if he can't get respect from Errol Spence punching him in the face, um, 
he's going to have a very long night as uh, Errol Spence likes to go to the body too. And he's not, well, I don't want to say he's not afraid to commit because we all know that's a lie. But um, Errol Spence has much more to lose than Mario Barrios. He has much more at stake. He has much more determination, much more experience fighting that way too. Um, so it'll be a much, much different fight, but Keith Thurman fights Southpaw is much, much different than, uh, than most people. And actually, while I thought that it was going to be a, uh, this move here was going to be a big, how do I say this? Mm -hmm. A liability, right? As, uh, I thought Barrios was going to be able to pick that shot off. I actually think it's going to be a very, very, very useful tool against Errol Spence. I think it's going to be really good against Errol Spence. So um, this is going to be a really interesting fight if they do wind up getting the fight. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, don't forget to check out the Fouts Boxing Combat System if you guys want the absolute ultimate way to learn boxing. Okay, uh, To learn boxing, to learn uh, how to hit the pads, how to how to move, how to shadow box, the what's and the why's, um, and to learn all the best ways to learn how to build athleticism, how to build speed and power. Um, anyway, um, also, if you're interested in the Full Fight Film Study, it's already up on Patreon. We watched it this morning. Um, Ten bucks to sign up, ten bucks a month. And if you would like breakdowns of your fighting, of your training, if you would like the drills to help you become the fighter uh, that you want to be, um, check it out. Also, I have a Discord available to people uh, who have purchased the Fouts Boxing Combat System and have been part of the Patreon for uh, for a little while um, that I can allow you to get into to kind of meet with the other people that are partaking in the system. Uh, there's about like 30-something people in there right now um, that are all part of Patreon, that are all uh, um, training and posting videos and stuff. It's a really cool little thing, but... Um, just an FYI, you're not going to just sign up on Patreon and then be like, where's the Discord? And then you're in. you got to train. you got to work hard. Um, there's a lot of information in there. There's a lot of uh, really cool stuff in there. So um, anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thanks, guys.